Greetings, everybody. Welcome to Prop Live, your weekly prop and costume making Q and A session. I'm Bill, and today we have Chad with us. Chad Hoku from Hoku Props. Hey, Chad. How's hey, guys. It? How's it going? How Good. Chad's uh, recovering from a, a crazy week or month or a couple of months. <laughs> Has it been? <laughs> Pretty bonkers couple of uh, last months for you, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for those of you go guys who don't know, Chad was just in the Twitch cosplay contest, and uh, you started your costume r when they announced it, right? I did. Um, kind of. I started thinking about it. We were actually going to TwitchCon before um, they announced the contest, but then I, uh, when I, I heard that they were doing the contest itself, it's yeah. like, oh, that's perfect because I'm already making a costume now. I'll just go crazy. That's awesome. And you just subscribed to us. Thank you, Chad. I did. I did. <laughs> um, awesome. Well, Chad, uh, you were on a long time ago. We had you on as a guest in Brittany Founded, October of 2014. It has been far too long. <laughs> far too long. <laughs> Um, and it was good to have an excuse to drag you on again. For those of you guys who didn't see, I we have the I actually have the Twitch video up. I'm gonna play it of uh, when you jumped on stage in oh, no. the giant <laughs> Reinhardt costume. Uh, just crazy, crazy tall. You carefully scooting your way across the stage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely awesome stuff. Uh, it's been really, really fun watching you put that together, uh, especially since you were live streaming all of it. Um, oh wow! Actually, I don't. I never saw this. I never saw this angle. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So there are links to the video from uh, uh, TwitchCon. It's all. It was all recorded on Twitch, of course. And we're gonna have links to um, the whole costume contest. And when you jumped up directly to when you jumped up on stage, um, those are all be in the show notes for this episode. So cool. Well, um, I'll have to go check them. Yeah, we'll link all link to all of that. You guys really ought to check out the costume contest. It was quite the spectacle. Like the stage was really cool. There were a ton of amazing costumes. Um, what it what was? Can you recount what the actual contest, like being on stage part, was for you? Because you you and uh, Tim had to do some crazy suit ups. You had a couple of pit crews backstage. Uh, yeah. So, uh, I I hadn't worn the whole costume since that morning. Yeah. So we we literally got there at eight o'clock, and the convention center was nice enough to they pulled up to us in the loading dock and said, "We're gonna drop pallets because you need to get the heck out of here, and we're gonna pallet everything upstairs." So we're like great because we're exhausted <laughs> and so they brought everything upstairs and we're sitting there and there's a couple problems attaching lines so we're putting on velcro and we're fixing stuff and making it making it work and then uh, i put the costume on they hang one arm from me and i'm like whoa i need to sit down i'm about to pass out oh, no. I've, been up, I've been up for way too long straight um so i sat down had a granola bar uh, solo rubato went and got me some water and came back uh oh wait no no it's actually ashley ashley uh fake gamer girl she uh she hooked it up with some water and so we got some energy hydrated came back um but then we we got rolled downstairs and just passed out on the ground i literally was asleep on the concrete for about 30 40 minutes <laughs> uh and then we there there was a, a major concern um, so everybody probably noticed that the, most of the larger than life, at least me and Tim, uh, the other Reinhardt, were on the sides. We didn't go up on stage. Right. And that's because we didn't have any way to access it. Because uh, I know Tim was on, it had to have been like seven or eight inch like platforms. And then I was on 18 inch stilts. And so getting up that ramp, we would have just completely fallen over and oh, eaten yeah. wet. So they they were nice enough to kind of like redirect some of the lighting around and get on the side. But when I was upstairs, we had carpet. So on the bottom of the shoe, and I, I can I can show this if that's okay. Yeah. The bottom of the shoe has uh, like the the kind of adhesive tape that's got all the tread on it. Right. Kind of like grip tape. That is a monster it shoe. <laughs> yeah, it works immensely well on carpet. So when I walked out, I, I was sad that the, the judges didn't see it, but 
when I walked out of the pre-judging, I was getting like three or four foot like strides. Wow, yeah. Great. Sam, Sam, my girlfriend, is like, I can't even keep up with you. You're walking to death. I'm like, I know, it's great, right? I've never felt so tall and empowered before. And then uh, when we were downstairs, the ground was polished concrete. It was it, it was like being on an ice rink. I don't know if anybody's oh, ever tried to walk on wet ice with shoes or something. You can't do it. So I'm sitting there just taking these little baby steps. It's like, <laughs> I was just like, oh, goodness, I hope I don't fall and die. <laughs> and you had to go back and forth to the stage like three times. <laughs> oh, right. So so originally they were like, okay, we – so when I left prejudging, they handed all of the larger than life, like the first five slots or first four slots because one of them um, – one of them didn't make it to the event, the guy in the uh, Vol'jin. And uh, so they are like, we want to get you out on, on stage to present you and back in as soon as possible just to make it easier on you guys. Um, so they rolled us out. And then when we turned around to come back in, they realized that there was no way for us to get back in because everybody had been staged in the, the path. Yeah. And so they're like, uh, can you just stand on the side? So, so I go and stand on the side. And then Tim stands on the side. And then on and on and on. And they realized that there was never an opportunity to get us back to backstage. So we're just standing there. And I, I know me and Tim, I think Tim Tim was handling a little bit better than I was. Yeah, he I was, was just, he was live streaming from inside his costume. I know. At one point, they, <laughs> at one point like his, his uh, one of his handlers ran up to me. He's like, yo, Tim's live streaming. Say hi to him. So I turned around and just started like dancing in Reinhardt. <laughs> <laughs> so I... Uh, from that point, you know, they kept calling us back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And I got I have to tell you, I had one of the best views outside of, of the judges seats. I had one of the best views in the house because I was so elevated. Yep. up. And I was just enjoying it. Right. But uh, yeah, so that that was kind of the experience. It was pretty, pretty mind boggling and, and eye opening. <laughs> that is really cool. Um, well, those guys, uh, for those of you guys that don't know, Chad ended up winning first ply prize at TwitchCon, which was well-deserved. Uh, I got to tell you, too, watching all of these talented uh, costume makers leading up to the event was agony for me because I had to, as a, I was judging it. I had to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> uh, but now now that it's over, I can be like, oh, my God, you guys are so amazing. You're so incredible. Um, so I'm very, very excited to see the torrent of talent that's going to hit next year just people that right because now people uh, people are going to start their costumes like today for next year <laughs> yeah i sort of it's i'm i'm really curious to see how everything goes off next year i've got to i've got to make some plans so i can defend my title that's right you do <laughs> <laughs> bring it guys super cool you heard it bring it you guys um awesome let's see what else do we have here um like i said we'll have links to all the videos for that down in the description go check that out go check out martin wong's photos he took photos of the stage he did a great job um again we'll link to that but look up martin wong photo on facebook and twitter um what else we have uh we have a new video up and i'd like everyone to go watch it if they'd be so kind <laughs> we're doing a deal with uh bethesda and uh, we're doing a series of videos showing how to build props and costumes from Skyrim for the new Skyrim Special Edition. So the first one is a video on how I built a giant two-handed axe, which is over there. I should I should have grabbed it. But uh, that's up live now. If you guys want to go check that out, you really ought to. Uh, that's really that's the only that's the only big th news I have right now. <laughs> the one video that I had to scramble to finish when we got back from TwitchCon. <laughs> Um, what else do we have before we start taking questions? Um, we have a second channel now. All of uh, the, the prop live videos are going to go up on that second YouTube channel. It's called Punish Props Extras. We'll have a link to that. You guys can go subscribe to that. Um, the main channel is just going to be for like big builds and stuff. Uh, more building content. All of the more talky content is going to go on the second channel. And then we're, our schedule, our video publishing schedule got bounced around a bit. So our Prop 3D is going to be on Mondays now. And we're going to have our Skyrim videos coming out for the next few weeks on Thursdays. So still just as many videos for you guys. Everything just got shifted a tiny bit. Um, that's all the housekeeping I have. Hold on. I got to grab that. I got to grab the axe. Hold on.
There we go. It's Wuthrad from Skyrim. Ta-da, this giant two-handed axe. And this was a challenge for me. I don't do a lot of sculpting like this, so I had to sculpt a creepy face in it. Is that your hammer? <laughs> Chad's got to show off his giant hammer. That is bonkers. <laughs> so yeah, we had a lot of fun putting this guy together. And uh, we got a video up on it right now. So go check it out. Cool. You ready for some questions, Chad? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, that's it's fine. fine. It's fine. Awesome. We're going to grab some questions. Uh, we have a good amount of them, but if you guys want to go to punishprops.com slash live and submit your questions there, uh, there's a chance they may get answered. First one comes from Pumpkin. He's very interested in trying neoprene for a future costume. What kind of uh, did you get from CreatureCast? And have you ever used latex or neoprene on anything other than foam? I need a very flexible coating that gives an even finish and EVA foam. And maybe thermal plastics. Uh, Chad, do you have much experience with latexes or neoprenes? Um, so I ended up using latex to seal all of Lionheart. Yeah. Um, that's just because I couldn't afford the cost of um, Plastidip. But I was actually really happy with how, how it all worked out. I, you know, I had a, a couple of things I didn't like necessarily about it, but the, the latex worked out. I used... I used one by Silpak called RL461. It's a thicker viscosity uh, mold latex that can be brushed on or put through a, a critter gun. I actually mm -hmm. spoke with you about it. And yeah. Distilled water, thin it down a little bit. You can tint it with acrylic paints. Um, but it, all in all, it worked really, really well. I know, I remember when I saw Brittany at DragonCon, she was saying that she wished that some of the armor you guys had made back in the past, you had sprayed a spray adhesive. So I spray adhesive the absolute yeah. crap out of all of the foam before I, I hit it with the latex. Yep. I've only, neoprene, though. yeah, I've only ever used latex on foam. We use polytex, uh, poly latex 60. And, um, we've only, we only have a little bit of experience with that latex. And I, I'll be honest, I can't remember the, the neoprene. I can't remember which, the the dude from creature cast sells it in different flexible varieties i can't remember which one we got because i literally went to his house and he poured some in a milk jug for me so i can't remember which one it is um but i imagine just a medium flexibility for general purpose would be pretty good but i can say that the latex that poly latex 60 is extremely flexible i have an axe right here oh my god i'm I have a different giant axe that's coated in latex and I can just bend this in half and it doesn't crease or anything. Like if you tried to do that with Plasti Dip, it would just have giant creases in it. So if you need something to be super flexible, then you can just go use latex. How did the um, the finish how uh, hold up on Reinhardt after the, uh, the whole weekend? Um, so far, so good. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a couple pieces that I didn't get the latex on thick enough. Mm-hmm. Um, like the bicep pieces, but the I don't know if you guys could tell from the judge's standpoint or the audience, but the arms were actually a little bit too long, mm -hmm. and so they were rubbing weird. I gotcha. Uh, in the middle of the night before we got out there, we uh, we put a set screw in a little bit too a, a little bit wrong, so the forearms were about eight inches longer, and um, that created some technical difficulties. I gotcha. <laughs> But yeah, they, they're just binding a little bit. I've had parts on costumes where late two latex pieces rub, and it will rub a hole right through. Um, yeah, but you can always just go nuts and co coat it in just a crap load of like just lots. I think that's the one thing that people don't do when they when they like if I use plastic dip, I put like eight layer. I put just a crap load of layers on it. Like mm -hmm. durability is really important to me. So when I'm putting uh on latex, I put all kinds of layers on. This is this axe is probably eight eight good layers of latex on there. Yeah, I did some testing. I mean, the only problem I was running into with the latex is because that was the first piece I did. the The right right forearm I tested and I did it was like seven or eight layers, um, and it was fine on the forearm. But all of that armor, that's a lot of armor to have eight layers of latex yeah, on. Yeah, yep. So I literally went through. Um, over a gallon of latex mm -hmm. on the whole costume. Yep, I don't so. doubt it. Okay, there you go, pumpkin. Give a give latex a try. Lon has a question for us. 
our buddy Lon wants to know, I've created some pattern pieces in paper that are about 26 inches long and I want to scan them so I can clean them up and have them available for someone else to print. What's your method for creating a print that spans multiple sheets? He has access to Inkscape and Illustrator. Oh. Um, I will usually go get those printed somewhere. If you go to like Kinko's or FedEx or whatever, they'll have a medium format printer that can do, or large format printer that can do three feet wide and like several feet long. And it's if you get it on cheap paper and black and white, it's super cheap. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I just go to Staples. Yeah. Um, I will break up if I want to print something at home. Um, I'll actually run it. I actually put a for the um, uh, hand of Ragnaros. I put a roll of construction paper in my plotter, my vinyl cutter. It's two feet wide, and I just jammed a Sharpie in it, and it totally, uh, it just totally drew it out. <laughs> yeah, it worked out. It worked out okay. Um, I'm sure most people don't have a two foot wide plotter, but if you do, then that's one way to do it. Um, but you can also just cut it into smaller pieces uh, and print it on a letter size printer, which is something I'll do as well. I know Illustrator, you can set um, like registration marks. Yeah, I'm not sure know. how to do that. Yeah, but the yeah. Um, Illustrator, I think Adobe Acrobat might have a way to split up larger files too, but I can't remember yeah. exactly. But it's way easier. Just put that file on a thumb drive, go to Kinko's and be like, you guys do it. Way, way easier. And get a couple of copies too, because um, you will you will invariably ruin one. <laughs> Uh, all right. Good luck, Lon. I wonder what he's making that's really big. Let's grab another one. Uh, Jerry, a.k.a. Barnacles, has a question. <laughs> he says, do you think the Barnacles Nergasm is the best YouTube channel on planet Earth? Possibly the entire galaxy. <laughs> I don't know if Jerry's watching or not, but we had a lot of fun building Reinhardt's helmet with him uh, a week ago. Thank Wait, you. you built a Reinhardt helmet? We did. <laughs> what? You were a little busy. You probably missed it. But I don't we, remember a week ago. No, it was uh <laughs> we this was our pre TwitchCon project. Brittany modeled the whole thing in Maya. Me and Jerry printed it um in half. So he printed half at his house, I printed half at my house. And then in one day, four of us got together, assembled, finished, and painted the entire thing. Um and it's cool. Uh so Jerry did a video on his channel. We'll link to that in the description. And uh, we did a video on our channel. Of a giant Reinhardt helmet. So there you go. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for that, Jerry. I don't know if you're watching, but thanks. That guy makes me laugh. All right, another one. Uh, Bill Helm says, "Hoku, what do you consider your worst cosplay moment to date? <laughs> Did you learn any valuable lessons from it?" That's a t- my, my <laughs> worst cosplay moment to date. Uh, uh, that's. That's actually kind of hard. I don't, I don't cosplay a whole lot. Right, right. You're really more of a fabricator. Yeah. So, um, let's see. There was this one. Okay. So there was this uh, at Dragon Con two years ago when I was in the Destiny armor. I ended up going out without my eyeball in. <laughs> And I walked up to somebody and I and and like they looked at me and I thought I had my LED eye in and instead I didn't. So I went. <laughs> <laughs> so there was just this hole there and they were just like, oh, my God, I felt bad. I've got so, uh, I've got pictures up, by the way, Hoku props dot com should have mentioned that earlier. That's Chad's website. <laughs> Folks should go check it out. That was, that was a bit of a faux pas. Yeah, I do have the uh, some pictures up from that build from that costume. Uh, Your uh, you got Hawk Moon. Very good. Very good. Have you played any of the Rise of Iron yet? I have not touched it. I'm at my. Uh... So whenever it comes to painting, um, depending on the weather outside, I normally live in Long Beach, California, which is right by the ocean, which for working most of the time is great. But when you're under a crunch with paint is awful. So I packed up all my stuff and went to my mom's house and I'm out in the desert because that's where paint dries in 10 minutes. Yeah. (laughs) So, um, uh, yeah. Is your, so you didn't bring your PlayStation with you? No, I don't have my PlayStation. I'm, I'm very sad about it. I'm 
I have I have not played. Uh, for those of you guys that are in here, uh, me and my girlfriend Sam both play and stream Destiny as well. Mm-hmm. And so it's it's literally been about two months since I've played. I logged in at like two in the morning on the day of release just to run around, and that's when they did the whole. We are uh, we want everyone to play at the same time together. So here's your wait in line or whatever it was, and I just oh, okay, I'm going to sleep. Yeah, yeah. So. All right. Well, it's waiting for you. We've been playing. It's been a lot of fun. I will. I will hop on and join you guys. All right. Uh, thank you for the question, Bill Helm. Uh, let's see. Wooten Mount. Wooten Mont wants to know. I'm planning out a bladed gauntlet, but I'm not sure how to make the blades. It's got a picture. Let's see here. Oh, it looks like um, Vega from uh, Street Fighter. Okay. Let's see. I'm uh, most comfortable using foam. Any suggestions? That'd be kind of tricky because um, they're really long, thin blades. What did you do to make those um, those Wolverine lightsaber blades? These are made out of quarter-inch acrylic. There you go. Um, I mean, I cheat. I use a laser cutter. Yeah. But basically, this material is incredibly durable. And you can also machine it really well. So if you were to take a file, you can file a, a nice hard edge in it. And honestly, it might be a little bit, if you were to put an edge on this, it might actually not be allowed at a con because you could literally kill somebody with it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So leave it blunt. Yeah. Uh, what I actually like to do is I just sand the surface and it gives it the appearance that it has a blade. Yeah. Put a nice bevel on there and it'll catch the okay. shine, but it doesn't need to actually be sharp. Yeah, I would I would build something like that because you could you could paint it to look like metal. Um, you could do uh, do it out of acrylic, and you could cut that with a scroll saw or a jigsaw or a bandsaw or a coping saw. Um, you don't need a laser; it really is handy, but you don't need one. I mean, you could do it out of a Sintra, and then yep. you could just cut it with a razor blade. Yep, there you go. What did I do so. my Wolverine claws out of? It may have been Sintra. I think I can't remember. It was a very long time ago. There you go, Wooten Mont. A couple ideas for you there. Let's grab another one. Revbolt Cosplay has a question. I'm working on Leona from League of Legends, and I'm stuck on her weapons. Hmm. It's a giant sword thing. That looks like something Harrison made. Uh, I can't remember if he made that or not. Um, what should I use for the hilt of the sword and the handle so it supports the blade weight? So this, do you, Are you familiar with this one, Chad? uh you said leona's weapon yeah I'm, i just posted a link to the image in chat and i'm pretty sure that harrison built this i will look right now it looks familiar he's built stuff from league of legends before um i don't know if he's made it but as far as like the material to make it out of well that's a tough one because the the middle loopy guy's got a hole in it yeah uh yeah i mean if you could build some sort of like steel armature that went inside of that, that would be great. Like obviously that means learning how to, you know, weld and having a welder and access to those materials. Um otherwise you're going to want to keep it extremely lightweight. Like using yeah. like using um um uh EPS foam or or something like that. That's actually what 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 this guy's made out of. Yeah. So this was all made out of um, it's XPS foam. It's the blue pink and insula- or it's it's the blue insulation foam. Yeah. It's called Square Edge. It's slightly denser, but this whole thing literally weighs probably mm, eight pounds, nine pounds. Yeah. Which for the size is awesome. Yeah. With that, uh, uh, with that sword, even if you made it really light, you're still gonna want to have some way to support that circle in the middle, and then have like a. a a spike not a spike but a a wire that goes down through the handle and something that goes up into the blade um yeah wood you could cut it out of wood but that would be a little bit tricky you'd have to then cover it in foam um i would if i was going to make that in a, for for and i wanted to be able to carry it around i would make the armature out of you know steel just just because i i don't want it to break it's such but a weak if you area. were to make it, I mean, this is along the lines of the, the EVA foam route, but if you were to take a just an aluminum or steel rod and just do a half half moon. That's a good idea. A half, yeah. And then that ran the length, and then you just sandwich it between a couple layers of foam. Uh-huh. 
I mean, um, that'll that'll prevent it from twisting because it has the half moon. In yeah, it. or even two, just two oh, yeah, aluminum two. rods. Yeah, you, you could get aluminum rods just from the hardware store and use those. That might be the the best Find way to together. do it. They yeah. do sell metal epoxies, which which bond metal relatively well too. Yeah, so maybe do that with, with some aluminum from the hardware store and then cover it in EVA foam and then sculpt it. Problem solved. Good luck, Rev Bolt cosplay. Um, let's see here. Rochelle has a question. How can I troubleshoot an e a leaky brush on mold with a single cut seam? I tried testing my first mold with water and it leaks uncontrollably. The seam is a wiggly shape to help key the seam together. And my mother mold is tightly wrapped, but it still pours out too quickly. Leaky molds. That's a bummer. Well, I'm just, is this like a silicone mold? I think put water in it and that means any urethane you put in there is going to be very unhappy yeah I, I usually try not to put water in my silicone molds if you're gonna um before you pour urethane in it you want to make sure it is dried out a lot yeah um otherwise you may have to just clamp the crap out of your mother mold um to keep it from leaking or you may remove a little material from the seam of your mother mold so that it hugs the 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 silicone mold a little bit tighter, if that makes sense. Yeah. If so. you use a a similar shore hardness um, silicone, you could you could technically take some mold release, spray it on one side of the mold, clamp it together, and then try and force some of that silicone into the other side that doesn't have mold release, mm -hmm. and it might bond a bit. But you just have to be really careful with the flange because yeah. it's not ever going to have like a really great um, adhesive like adhesion. Right, right. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, Evil Ted says, use Vaseline uh, as a seal on the edges and then clamp it. Very good, Ted. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> cool. There's a couple of things for you to try, Rochelle. The, the good thing is that you'll never do that again with the next mold that you make. <laughs> All right. Important question from Blitzagog. He says, for breakfast, waffles or pancakes? Hmm. French toast. French toast. Ooh, curveball. Tell you what, there's a place nearby called the Pancake Chef, and they have a bacon waffle. <laughs> it's a waffle with bacon in it. Or, yeah. And then they put bacon on it, and it's pretty hard to beat. So I got to go waffle there. If the waffle has bacon in it. There's cool. a place in Maui. Um, the only place I would say pancakes is if I'm in Maui. There's this place. Uh, called sam soto's and they have banana pancakes that oh. are absolutely delicious <laughs> i see talk in the chat going french toast hype <laughs> 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 thanks talk um cool all right well the, the party's split here we got but i i say pancake or wah uh, i say bacon waffles <laughs> thanks for the uh the question blizzagog blizzagog uh, Arcfab has another one, or has one for us. Let's see. I've started slash casting my Scarecrow mask, but I'm running into a constant problem of thin spots in my cast. Any advice on how I can fix this? Uh, he's using 65D. Um, the end appearance doesn't matter, but he's getting thin spots in his slush casting. Whoop. I would recommend using uh, one of the Eurofills. There. Uh, it'll actually thicken it up. And then, um, depending on the, the urophil, like if you use micro balloons, for example, not only would it thicken it up, uh, it would also help uh, lighten the, the eventual mold a bit or the, the casting. So it also makes cutting, like cutting flashing and all that, a lot easier. Yeah. Um, that's a smooth on product, urophil, and there are a bunch of different numbers of yeah. urophil. Um, so just read what they all do. Make sure you read the safety precautions because some of them are just silica. And if you breathe that, it's like breathing a million tiny razor blades. Yeah. So just know that. But you can mix it in with your resin and then brush it. And it's at a higher viscosity. So it'll actually stick to vertical surfaces a lot better. So you would slush cast it a normal layer of 65D to get all your detail. Or even like 300 and then mix up a batch or two with the urophil in it and brush that in. 
Uh, you know what else is also um, really convenient uh, for layer thickness is if you just use a little bit of tint inside the resin, each layer is going to have a slightly different color. Yeah. So if there's anywhere that's a little bit transparent, you see the previous color, that means you have a thin spot. You need to focus on that on the next uh, layer of the slip Yes, good call. I see uh, we got we got all the cool kids in the chat today. Uh, Core Geek just goes, was just uh, showed up. He says, Hoku hype. Hoku hype. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. Uh, we got to get Eric to TwitchCon. That would have been fun. Let's see here. We'll see him. Uh, He's going to be at BlizzCon, isn't he? Is he? Oh, I hope so. Let us know, Eric. Let us know if you're going to be at BlizzCon. Yeah, he said he's going to be like the pro handler. He's not going to have a costume. Oh, wow. Um, I saw he was just working on something with Alicia. She's got a new project. Um, Arthas, I believe, she's working on. Oh, yeah. All right. (laughs) ArcFab, thank you for the question. Grenthor the Mighty, my new favorite chat name. Uh, has anyone asked uh, about Hoku's tattoo on his arm yet? He's curious. I'm curious. Oh. I've never asked. Um, so, for those that don't know, I'm Hawaiian. So, this is a uh, homage to my grandma. Oh. So she was a, a hula dancer. Cool. Yeah. Very nice. Good question, Grenthor. Uh, best gamer ever has a question. He's making a Destiny Titan. I like that. He's doing the year two Iron Banner gear. He's curious how I would make a ponytail on the top of the helmet. Let's see if I... Um, whoop, whoop. Go back. I got to open the this picture. Open in a new tab. Got it. So I'm not, I'm not sure, quite sure what this ponytail is. It's loading. It's still loading. Did he say Iron Banner? Yes. Okay, so it's... it's like the, the medieval one. Yeah, and it's got like a horse tail. On yeah. the uh, on there, yeah. I mean, you go super legit and get some horse hair. You could. <laughs> you absolutely could. Smells. <laughs> um, yeah. I think the main thing is you're gonna want to like style it so that it stays up there. Whatever long hair you use, and you could even use just like glue, like fabric glue, to style the hair, and then glue it to the helmet so it doesn't fly everywhere (laughs) but uh that's a thing that people used to do for real helmets so i'm sure there's sure there's solutions out there already horse hair huh now i just want to go play destiny (laughs) (laughs) right (laughs) i heard shotguns are all the rage in pvp right now is that a fact i haven't played any pvp yet um Oh, and also real quick for that one, um, look up wig styling videos on YouTube. There's a lot of those out there. Um, So whatever hair uh, solution you end up going with, uh, look up some hair uh, wig styling videos. Thank you for the question. Best gamer ever. Next one comes from Distemper. Uh, I don't know if you guys have heard of Humble Bundle. I have. It lets you pay what you want to get books and games at different times. Right now, they have a ton of maker books, including 3D printing books in their book bundle. That's a really cool... Oh, this is really just a plug. It's worth checking out, though. Um, mm. I have heard of the Humble Bundle. Oh, they did a bunch of stuff with Make Magazine. Um, Chad, you would actually really like Maker Faire. You should, yeah. you should go next year. I'm going to go next year. Where is Maker Fair? Uh, no, it's in um, San Mateo. Oh. Yeah. Super close to San Francisco. Um, I'm down. Yeah, you definitely ought to come on by. Um, anyway, anyway, um, they have a deal on Humble Bundle right now with a bunch of books uh, published by Make Magazine on 3D printing and a whole bunch of other cool stuff. And the way Humble Bundle works is it's a pay what you want sort of thing. And there are different tiers. So if you pay $1 or more, you get these like nine books or something crazy, like eBooks. And then $8 or more gets you another tier. 15 or more gets you another tier. Mm. So that's pretty cool. Good thing to check out. I might have to go buy those. <laughs> Thank you for the heads up distemper. Um, let's keep rolling. Cyber Demon Props wants to upgrade his Space Marine helmet to make the eyes glow better. Do you have any tips for making the lenses and a helmet glow bright so that you people can see them, but you can see out of them? 
That is the real challenge, isn't it? I know some of our buddies were trying to figure out that for um, Star Lord helmets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you have any ideas, Chad? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> I have a hard enough time seeing. I there, one of the reasons Lionheart was so appealing is he didn't have a helmet. Yeah. And Phil can attest. The last time I wore a helmet, it was Merak. Yeah. And I had to Merak with one eye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um i know i know something forward. a lot of go ahead have the led facing forward that's pretty much about it yeah the um uh iron man what i've seen people do with iron man with the glowing eyes is there's a strip of plastic that's lit up and then there's a slit under it where there's a gap between the helmet and the glowing part where you can just see out of just a small slit um, but as far as seeing out of the material that is also glowing, those two things are, are in conflict. Um, one thing you can do is like etch lines, like a grid into whatever that is, and then sidelight it with LEDs and it will glow pretty well and you can kind of see pretty well, but it's not going to be like the way Star-Lord eyes, Star-Lord's eyes will glow in the movie because they did that all in CG. Uh, there was no seeing out of that if his eyes were fully glowing. Um, so either either just... I mean, the easiest solution is to make the glowing thing just a little bit higher so that you can see under it. That's the the, e- the easy solution. <laughs> but go see what other people have done for their Iron Man helmets. You'll see what I'm talking about. Um, let's grab one. That was C- uh, Cyber Demon Props. Next one is D Creations... With a K. I'm making the Rueful Axe from Skyrim. All right. Uh, it has two mirrored wolf heads that I'd like to make out of clay. Make one part mold of either. Um, uh, let me see. What do you recommend as clay that I could uh, leave and work on Leave and work on for a couple of days? And what's go- good for making a mold of it? What would you... What, what uh, clays do you like to use that would, would then be molded? Um, I pretty much only use... Um, the only clay I use that I sculpt is like epoxy sculpt or mm-hmm. like freeform air. Yep. Um, other than that, clay is pretty much exclusively used for uh, making molds. Um, I don't. I'm not a sculptor. Yeah. I never claim to be. <laughs> I, I do digital sculpting in ZBrush, so it's it's a very different beast. Yeah. Um, uh, monster clay seems to be pretty uh, common. People seem to like that a lot. Um, I do like, you pointed out, epoxy sculpt. It's technically a clay, but it's an epoxy, and it cures, and you can sand it. Because I am way better at sanding than I am at sculpting. Right. (laughs) So it depends on where your skill set is, but that's definitely a good solution, too. You could roughly sculpt a a wolf head and then sand it and refine it once it's cured. I know a lot of people like chiffon clay. And I think that's kind of what monster clay is, a chiffon. It no, might be. Monsters, no, Monster Clay is wax-based. Ah, yes. It's a, it's a waxy... It's an oil-based clay, but it's more of a waxy-based clay um, versus chiffon, which is completely oil. So um, I know I know Monster Clay takes a lot more heat. It also retains heat a lot longer. So, But none of these clays will uh, dry out. Uh, so yeah, you can you work can on it. Yeah, you can let them sit there. Yeah. Um, just don't leave them in the sun. Yeah, they will melt. Um, and then... For mold making on that, I mean, if you want just basic mold, uh, silicone, um, mold max 30 is fine. I use that for just about everything. Um, you know, Aubriana uses, um, uh, for anybody, Mad Masker, she uses, at least she used to use monster clay. And and so that's the reason she liked it so much is she could go with a rake tool and, and do all of the, the detail work. Um, but it has such a high melting temperature that she can take her heat gun and she can flash it, mm-hmm. which will get rid of a lot of the tooling marks Ooh. and fingerprints and whatnot. But because it has such a high melting temperature, it won't affect the major proportion it, major like uh, form. It'll only affect this very like surface, so to speak. Yeah, so, Just like easy mode for smoothing smoothing stuff out. Yeah, I like kind that. of like it's like shift on ZBrush. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's, if only there was that mirror option that they have in ZBrush, I know, too. Right? <laughs> the only way I'm ever getting symmetry. I know. Me, too. 
Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, if you're going to mold that, then, um, then just mold max 30 would be just fine. You'd be able to pop out dozens of copies of that thing. Um, good luck with that build D creations. Let's grab one here from Josh. He says, I'm planning on using the smooth on body silk method that Bill uh, used on Bob uh, in a recent video. Any tips that may have been left out of the video? So I, we use the body, the, body, um, the body double silk, and you can just put it on beards. Yeah. It's crazy how it works. Yeah, but I love that stuff. It worked just fine. I, I complete every time somebody asks me whether or not I'll do a, a live cast, whether it's a hand or whatever, I'm like, I will gladly do it. I will charge you less for the work, but you have to pay for the body double silk because mm -hmm. I won't touch the alginate anymore. Yeah. I, I've never liked alginate and I never will. <laughs> alginate is a tricky beast to work with. Uh, once it cures, you can't add more to it. So you really only ever get like one good shot at it and you have to have like five people on it at a time. Um, when we when we um, molded Will's face, we just had like five people who were just like, ah, ah, just smashing alginate all over his face. I'm glad we you know what? Um, recorded that. Actually, Silpak has a product that will um, allow alginate to stick to itself. Ooh. So you can build up layers. But even then, it's still, as you're working, the alginate's still evaporating and shrinking. So yeah. it's still that. Ah, yeah. Ah. Oh yeah. So yeah, the body We're double the body double we did that too. <laughs> the body double <laughs> silk was really great. Um really awesome to to work with. Um I can't think of anything that we may have left out of the video. Bob was very thorough with his video. We'll link to that one in the in the uh show notes. Um and we've also got an alginate video and Steve Winsett also has an alginate casting book. So there's all kinds of uh resources out there for you. Let's grab, uh, let's grab another one. This one's from Nick. We'll see Nick at BlizzCon. I'm sure of it. In fact, he says, uh, "Amazing job, Chad. Very good." He's curious if we're going to see Reinhardt at BlizzCon. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Oh well, yeah, I'll be in Reinhardt. Um, hopefully by then the hands will work because they didn't work. Um, you had a thumb. I saw your thumb working. No, no, no. It, it actually the the glue just broke loose, and then oh, yeah. on this hand the the pinky broke loose. So if I raise my hand, the pinky kind of like flopped around. <laughs> yeah, right. Reinhardt was was slowly transitioning into dapper Reinhardt. Yeah. So yeah, I just needed the 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 gigantic Stein or 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 wine glass. But um, and then my girlfriend Sammy, um, she said she's also a streamer. She we're doing a May for. Oh, so that's right. We'll that's at, gonna be awesome. Yeah, we'll be at BlizzCon. I'm very excited to see that. Um, Nick also wants to know what brand of varnish I use to seal foam and we'll put a link to it in the show notes. It's just the stuff on, on, you can find it on Amazon. I get it at Michael's as well, or Joanne's. It's just a rattle can of spray varnish for sealing foam. Um, it's Is really it great. Liquitex? No, I mean, I, I'm sure any brand will work Var as far as I know, varnish is varnish, but it, the great thing about varnish is it dries really fast. It's super flexible. And especially if you're using latex, latex ends up being having that weird tackiness to it. And as soon as you hit it with varnish, it's it doesn't have that anymore. Um, so there you go. Like that. We'll link to the specific brand of it in the show notes. Love that. And it has that wonderful, wonderful smell. <laughs> Brittany does Probably not. better than latex. Yeah. Does it, does it, does it uh, inhibit the latex stink from getting out? Um, once you spray varnish on it, that's all you smell is the varnish. Gotcha. Oh, <laughs> uh, Mike from Chrome Effects Studios. I like Mike. He's a good guy. Uh, he's curious for Reinhard. What was the most challenging part of the build? And did you pick up any new skills? That's a good question, Mike. Oh, man. Um, I would say, give me a second bit. I'm going to think about it while I answer this second part. All right. Um, as far as picking up new skills are concerned, I learned a whole lot. Um, so I'd never used latex before. Mm -hmm. I'd never used a critter sprayer before. Um, and then there was a bunch of new types of, of material I was experimenting with as far as tooling and whatnot. So I now know that I can vacuum form XPS foam. 
Yeah. I now know that it only sl- slightly melts when you vacuum form <laughs> it. Um, and then if you use PETG, it'll completely crush because PETG doesn't stretch as much. <laughs> um, but, you know, there was, I think there was components on, on Lionheart that uh, people still don't realize were there. I mean, we had, we had vapor effects going on. We had uh, programmed um, NeoPixel rings, which were doing like the animations for the uh, jet pack. Um, and then the, the armature system to actually control the arms was, was super intricate. Um, I think one of my, one of, okay, so those are all the new things I learned. And then I guess now to step back, uh, there's two things that stand out most Maybe three things. I'll say three things. Sorry. Um, the scale of it was absolutely crazy to work around, um, making sure that all of the components were staying scaled properly. Luckily, because I've got so much experience with 3D, I was able to use that as reference to keep it all in scale. Um, but one of the the big, big things that I, I set out to do with this costume was to make sure that my movement seemed um, in the realm of reality. Um, I hate how arm arm extensions look when they just are mounted to your your hands and you lift them up and it it looks like you've got an elbow way at the base of the arm in the bicep region. There is no elbow, but the arms are just like you know forever long. So I wanted to have actual functional elbow movements and I wanted to have functional wrist mo- rotation. Even if the hands didn't work, I feel like having those two gestural poses. Um, like I said, my hands didn't work, but when that guy walked up with the check, I wanted it to look as if I was actually receiving the check from him. (laughs) And I was really happy with how that looked. Um, the second thing was just being able to walk. I wanted to walk comfortably, um, while it still looked natural once again. And so, um, that was definitely my main, uh, focus was just movement. I wanted to be able to move right. Um, I wasn't able to do the the crazy pose. I was going to do it there at the end, and then I threw my shoulder off, and I was like, ah, screw it. <laughs> but uh, was that good? Yeah, that was good. That was good. Um, very, very cool. Yeah, that was – and I will say from the, the judge's standpoint, one of the things that really set that one above and beyond was the variety of skills involved. Um, and when we got to see it up close, cause we do, for those of you guys that don't know with, um, costume contest judging, usually not always, but usually there is pre judging. We don't judge when we're up on the stage, even though we did like a, a powwow, uh, after everyone was, uh, shown off, uh, we had already picked the winners by then. So we did this pre judging thing where we get five good minutes to question the people, um, who are in their costumes. We get to, we'll get up and look and look really close at everything. Like we get to see things this close, this far away. And, um, with the, your Reinhardt, the, uh, we got to see the smoke effects and the lighting effects and vacuum forming and CNC and cloth and foam and latex. And there was just a, such a huge, range of skills that were all executed uh to a high level like that's if if folks at home are looking for a way to to impress judges that's one good way to do it um not just have one not be really good at one skill but be really good at a a lot of skills and combine them and you certainly picked a costume that lent itself for showcasing a wide range of skills um for you guys watching i was i just poked up a picture of uh chad grabbing the trophy this is a photo from martin wong <laughs> getting the trophy from that was made by our buddy volpen props which is pretty great and someone already posted a picture of eric jarman and his wondrous face <laughs> <laughs> actually jamie my sister-in-law posted that picture thank you jamie <laughs> Uh, so that that face was me going, oh, don't try to put that on top yeah. of the lion. <laughs> they hung the metal from the lion, and then like they held it up, and I'm like, oh crap, because you got to remember, like they're on my left side, yeah. right? So they're holding up this this trophy, and then I turn, I'm like, oh crap, there's a there's a trophy there. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's great. Uh, there's also uh, they put the 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 metal they put in the lion's mouth, which I thought was pretty great. Yeah. <laughs> fantastic let's see we have time for another one or two uh nostalgia uh let's see i'm building some giant lego minifigs out of xps foam with a pvc skeleton 
Uh, he's making Captain Redbeard. The plan is to cover it, in, cover it in fiberglass or a waterproof paper mache cement mix. Any suggestions on making sure I don't uh, blow the scale once I start adding a hardener to the XPS foam? Um, I'm not sure what he means by blow the scale. Like maybe make it too big or too small by adding mass to it. I don't know. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna just talk about a big costume and, and assume he's talking about maintaining the proportions. Um, if you guys are not familiar with the Egg Sisters cosplay, they yeah. did the Blackheart Reinhardt at Dragon Con. They'll be at BlizzCon. We're totally gonna Reinhardt it up. Yes. Um, but they literally went and got a full scale print. So they got multiple prints done and put them up, and they have a giant on the wall uh, in a couple of the pictures I've seen. Um, okay, well, well, we'll get to wait as well, but they have a giant picture on the wall of the entire costume, and so they definitely have something to hold it up and looking to say, okay, that's either big or not. Um, why, why, why fiberglass it? Um, fiberglass is heavy for what it's worth. I don't know if you need fiberglass. Um, yeah, I mean, the only, the reason why I would fiberglass it would be for durability. I mean, obviously I just make the whole thing out of foam because that's how I roll. But, uh, a lot of people I know are more comfortable by ta taking a big chunk of, uh, like, uh, XPS and then sculpting it. Um, that's not how I work. That's, that's what so, you got there. So this guy is all XPS and I actually sealed it with a crap ton of liquid latex. Very good. And and what that did is the XPS is now all broken up and screwed up under underneath it. But the, the latex is so durable, it just holds it. So everything's all squishy. It pops back into, into shape. But I can I can beat the heck out of it. And it, it holds its form really well. So um, you, you might also try something like um, Smooth-On's uh, Epsilon? Epsilon. Yes. You didn't need a lot of it. <laughs> But that's designed for coating foam, and it, it because it's an epoxy and not a polyester, it won't melt your yeah. uh, XPS. That's something else to consider too. If you are going to put um, fiberglass on extruded polystyrene, then uh, if you use a polyester resin, it will melt. It will melt. And that would um, be I see a message in the chat. Baka moichi moichi gay. Let's talk. Because that sounds super interesting, and I totally want to turn Booty Poppins into a Twitch alert syndicator. Yes! <laughs> that would be amazing. All right. That's I'm so down. cool. Just have Booty Poppins. By the way, you guys don't know, Booty Poppins is the name of the trophy. that um, Vulpin's chat named it that. Uh, that's amazing. <laughs> All right. We got time for one more here. Uh, hey, Commander Holly's in the chat. Hi. Hi there, Yo, Holly. Hello, Holly. Um, another one of the judges and our buddy, uh, Holly's awesome. Uh, I'm in the, pro oh, this is tentacle grape cosplay. I'm in the process of making president Sarah Fina's, uh, headpiece from fantastic beasts, the Harry Potter Potter prequel. Oh, all right. Uh, it looks like a delicate nest of Ivy leaves and berries with a thunderbird sitting on top. Uh, I just decided to use warbler craft foam and wire to create it. Let's see. Um, I'm not sure if I should brush on some Smooth On 300 or Plastic Dipper Latex, but I thought the latter would be excessive um, for something you're wearing around the head. I think this is going to be like Latex Day. We're just like, whatever you got, guys, just covered in latex. <laughs> it's just flexible and still durable. Yeah. I mean, uh, the cleanup, when I was cleaning up the side, because I, I had a pot of latex, I, I had a I wasn't used to how to hang the critter sprayer and, mm -hmm. and so i ended up having it fall and the jar just exploded yep the jar full of latex and i just was like screw it so i said it I, I just pulled the tarp aside and got another one and i came back a couple of days ago and it was just like holy crap man you could do some magic with this stuff. yeah you just peel it off <laughs> you know? so um, i think I, I was really surprised how durable the, the latex was yeah you might consider consider um doing the latex um, if you want to do anything, like if you have wire in that thing and you want it to be posable, the, um, the latex will stay plenty flexible and you could pose the wire and it'll just stay that way. Um, I want to, it makes me want to just do more with latex and just play with it some more instead of only using it to cover foam. 
but I still yeah. have. I bought five gallons of it a while ago, and I've I've got plenty left over. So <laughs> I'm just slowly yeah. working through it. <laughs> All right, you guys heard it here. Latex for everything. Solved all the world's problems. Uh, and that's it. That's our last question. If those of you have not already gone to hokuprops.com, you should. You should or my stream. You should definitely go to twitch.tv slash hokuprops. Give him a follow over there. Uh, what are you going to be working on in the couple coming up weeks? Uh, so we'll actually be working on on reinhardt a bit to get everything just back together yeah, and yeah. happy and, and make some modifications we're going to be doing may from overwatch yes um yes i've got this i've got this idea to stick some confectioner spray inside her gun so she can actually shoot cold spray yay hopefully blizzard doesn't <laughs> get upset by that um but better to so better to ask for uh, forgiveness than permission <laughs> exactly i mean we can always just take it out right yeah. but that should be fun we want to do some animatronics and all that um but just just stream that's my plan is stream it's fun wonderful and, like hanging out with everyone so very good um holly in the chat is saying critter hype <laughs> right i think it's super impressive it is really great i'll put um i'll just put acrylic paint through it just really thick acrylic paint if i don't want to yeah. bother watering it down or thinning it i just run it through the critter it's like a shotgun it'll put out a lot of color but um you can put all kinds of stuff through that thing i just got these guys um real quick yeah. badger sent me sent me some airbrushes to test out and so like i don't know if you've ever tried the badger crescendo no i haven't but this, this airbrush puts out more paint than i've ever seen out of an airbrush before wow i'm gonna have to so. get go buy more airbrushes <laughs> Fun. very yeah. good all right thank you everyone so much for coming and hanging out with us for the last hour thank you so much for your questions you guys are the best thank you tiny brian for subscribing with twitch prime you're awesome and thank you chad for coming and hanging out with us on prop live we'll see everyone yeah. next week bye